Hey guys, so today I'm doing my favorite products of 2011. Um, kind of uploading it a little bit late, but it's still pretty early on in January, so I thought it wasn't too late to do it. But um, I don't have too many. Um, I In 2011, I really limited the products I used, I got rid of about half of my makeup collection. I don't know why I feel like when I have to when I get new things, I have to kind of phase out the old stuff. So I either try and use it up or um or I hand stuff that I'm not using down to my sisters or friends, um, things like that. Maybe that has to do with me being a Libra and always have having to have things balanced. But uh anytime I do buy a whole lot of new stuff, I get rid of a whole lot of stuff also. Same with my clothes, shoes all type of things so I'll start with my skincare then I'll do hair and makeup I have the most makeup items but the first skincare item uh, is definitely me definitely my Clarisonic Mia and I bought this pretty late on in the year but it has made a dramatic difference in my skin um, my pores seem a lot tighter and smaller my skin texture is a whole lot smoother and uh, everyone knows what a Clarisonic looks like um, this is a Mia I got it during the Sephora friends and family sale and I had a gift card so I got it probably I paid out of pocket about under $50 for it which is a great deal um, so this is just the Mia. I have the normal brush head on it. I had, when I first got it, the deep pore brush head, which is my favorite because I like that over this one. And for some reason, the normal brush head, um, it kind of sprays out a little. I don't, I'm not sure why, but um, I'll definitely go back to the deep pore cleansing brush. But I love my Mia. Also, uh, this is kind of going into makeup items, but I do consider this um part of my skincare and this is my primer and i use the mac um prep and prime face protect and this primer is the best primer that i have used for my skin um it has a white consistency Let's see if i can show you guys i don't want to this one's a little almost empty i've been using it for quite a few months but you don't need a whole lot about pea size for your whole face and this hut does have spf 50 and that's the texture it's very creamy it's kind of it kind of has like a moisturizer consistency and it blends in to nothing and it doesn't have that primer like kind of that greasy very um very uh silicone feel do i although i do believe this does have silicones it feels more like a face moisturizer and the SPF 50 really helps because I do do a lot of use a lot of treatments on my face for acne and for discoloration. So you do really have to protect your skin from the sun when you use those type of products. And SPF 50 is <laughs> very good. I definitely recommend SPF 30 or above. And this makes my makeup stay on and stay the same as I apply it all day, uh, even during my eight-hour shifts at work. So that's another part of my skincare, but also makeup because I use that before I apply my makeup. Now I'm going to move on to hair items. I only have two things. I have the olive oil replenishing conditioner and this is my holy grail um face on my face. Holy grail hair um conditioner. I use this every other time I wash and I leave it in for about five to ten minutes. Um, it would be better if you use the shower cap, um, maybe while you're in the shower to kind of let it steam a little bit into your hair. Um, but I don't have, I ran out of those. But this conditioner really helps, especially when I'm stretching my relaxers. It helps me detangle my new growth and it just softens um, my new growth and my uh, relaxed hair. And it has a very citrusy smell and it's quite affordable. It's, it's no more, it's less than $10 for the bottle and it also comes in a little packages so I love that conditioner um, oh and the brand is the organic root stimulator olive oil replenishing conditioner best conditioner ever and an, another product is an oil and this is jojoba oil um, I use the now brand and I, I believe you can get this at GNC but I bought it off of Amazon um and i'm kind of out you can see i'm down here uh so i will be repurchasing this pretty very soon but um i've tried a whole lot of different oils in my hair and my top 
uh, two, which the other one should have been here, but I ran out of that. Um, and that's the argan oil. So my hair really likes argan oil and jojoba oil. I mostly like jojoba oil um, to rub into my edges because for some reason the edges of my hair are the most driest. Um, and I do get kind of flaky uh, my scalp around my edges. And um, so when I massage this into my edges, it really helps control the dryness there. And I also seal in my moisturizer with jojoba oil. It's extremely light. It's not greasy when you apply it in moderation. You don't need a whole lot at all. Um, and it, jojoba oil, I believe, um, mimics the natural oils from that grow, that already comes out of your scalp. So I really love this oil um, and argan oil. Those two are my top two favorite hair oils. Um, next, I'm going to move on to my favorite perfume of 2011. And this is a pretty new bottle. Um, I was using this as samples before I actually got it. And I smelled this a while ago and I loved it. And I had samples from Sephora and I was using kind of randomly throughout the year. And for Christmas, I got um, one of those Sephora boxes with the samples and then you get a full size when you find your favorite. And this is the uh, Giorgio Armani Aqua de Joya perfume. Looks like this. It's a very, very fresh scent. Um, it ha doesn't have, it kind of a, it's hard for me to describe the scent. It's, because I have it on right now, it's very fresh and it reminds me of kind of like a beachy type scent, but it's not really sweet. It kind of has a little bit of a, a citrus tone to it. I can't really describe fragrances very well, but I just suggest you smell this when you go into a department store. Now I'm going to move on to makeup items. I'll start with brushes and I have two brushes that have become my favorite brushes of 2011. Uh, first is this is I've seen this in a lot of people's favorite videos but this is an amazing brush. This is uh, from the ELF Studio line and this is the powder brush. It's a flat top brush and it's very dense. It's extremely soft. I use this to apply my foundation and my powder after. Um, so this is great for either one of those. Um, I love this the most for liquid foundation because you don't get those little hairs that kind of stick to your face when you're buffing in foundation like I used to get with the MAC 109 I believe. I hated that brush for foundation because every time you start to blend you would get little black hairs all over your face and then you had to go and pick them off. But this doesn't shed, um, it's extremely soft, washing it is so easy. Um, I will definitely be purchasing more of these and it's just a flat top brush and it's the e.l.f. the e.l.f. powder brush. And the other brush I have is from Walmart. It's um, part of the high definition, um, I don't remember the brand. But if you go to Walmart, you see these ones in packets and they're synthetic brushes, uh, HD something. I don't remember. I don't have the packets anymore, but this is the angled, um, I believe it's maybe called like angled blush brush or something like that. And what I love about, uh, to use this brush for is my bronzer. Um, I just sweep it into my bronzer and I go right into my cheek with the hollows of my cheeks and it fits there perfectly and it blends as it applies so it's very especially when I have to hurry and go to work I just, I just blend it really quickly and it's just really easy brush and very affordable I believe this is less than ten dollars and the elf brush is only three dollars so I love these two brushes now on to the rest of my makeup items uh you guys have heard me rave about this product so, um Sephora waterproof eyeliner I use this um, every time I wear eyeliner basically if I'm not using liquid liner I'm using this on my waterline on my tight line and I love to use this um, on my upper lash line just apply it very roughly you don't have to be neat or anything and then I use the smudger end here and I just smudge it in it gets a very soft look make your lashes lashes look very full so I do that most of the time with this and I believe it's only eight or nine dollars so and I believe it's only eight or nine dollars so I love this product and this is my second one that I bought and also I have my MAC um, four pan palette that I made myself the pro palette and the colors I have in here are sable 
embark saddle and I believe this is all that glitters and this is basically my everyday eyeshadow palette when I do wear eyeshadows because I'll either wear no eyeshadow or just wear a cream shadow or I wear these and this just gives me the perfect nude eye look that goes with everything and I can use it bark to smoke it out or I use all that glitters most of the time just to highlight my inner corner um but these three are definitely my most used eyeshadows so I love these um also i have my makeup forever matte velvet foundation um that is my holy grail foundation basically uh it's my third third bottle i've bought uh, in the past two years of this and my color is 75 and this is just perfect for oily skin it lasts all day i love how it applies and i love the finish so definitely my favorite holy grail foundation of 2011 Next I have my bronzer and this is the Galan ter terracotta, terracotta Bronzer in Ebony 8. It's the Terracotta Bronzing Powder. So you guys can see the label here. And I bought this from Sephora. It's pretty expensive. I believe it's $49. Um, but I've had this since the summertime and I still have not hit pan on it and I use it every day basically um, and it's just a very deep color um, I love this one more than the cheaper bronzer uh, that I had which is the covergirl um, queen collection the bronzer uh, that's really popular but I like this one better because it blends so easily and um, it's more pigmented and I don't have to Keep, really dig my brush in it like I do the other one I barely swipe it get enough color and it blends off on much easier than the other one and this is my favorite go-to blush especially for 2011 and this is the uh, NARS blush in Dolce Vita I've talked about this in some past videos but it's just a very simple dust oops I have to cover in the mirror this is a very simple dusty rose color um it's pretty matte doesn't really have any shimmer it does have a slight kind of satin finish to it and i use this every day as my everyday blush and i have it on today i'm not sure if you guys will be able to tell on the camera but i love this blush and i'm surprised i haven't hit pan on this brush either but you barely need a lot of this because it but you barely need a lot of this because it's extremely pigmented like most of nara's products are so that's all for my 2011 favorites. Um, this is the first yearly favorites thing that I've done. Um, but I really like these videos and I have been watching almost everyone's lately since they've been posting them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.